In today's show, we've got news about new Taste of Festival of the Arts. Uh, Disney World provides date-based, multi-day ticket updates, plus headline news, trivia, and so much more, all in today's Disney Parks Podcast. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times. And get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, did you miss me? Yes. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Uh, we a- had a uh, we had a great vacation last week. I want to thank uh, Edward for stepping in. Did a phenomenal job. Uh, if if I couldn't be here, I'm glad that Edward got to step in. He brings uh, such uh, a, a passion and a love for Disney. Uh, it makes me look uh, really, really bad. So uh, thanks, buddy. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so yeah, it was great. Great hearing him. I, I popped in for a little while uh, during the live show. And uh, that was cool to uh, to see it going on and uh, just to listen and just kind of enjoy it. I I that was rec- that was the plan just to watch. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I I I record the episode. <laughs> I edit the episode. I very rarely ever just sit and listen to the episode. Yeah, uh, but it was really kind of fun to just sit back and kind of enjoy. So that was cool. Uh, so again, thanks uh, so much, buddy. I appreciate it, and uh, I owe you a big big time. So. Uh, so yeah, uh, before we get too far into it, uh, I did want to encourage you if you're planning any type of vacation for 2021 or, or beyond, or whenever we're allowed to travel freely again, uh, I would love to cons- have you consider our friends over destination to travel. Uh, it's a great, and I speak for personal experience when you have a, a vacation planned that gives you that hope to kind of endure whatever you're dealing with. Uh, it gets you through the hard weeks. It gets you through some of the crazy times that we're going in right now. Uh, so maybe it takes a time and plan a vacation. It doesn't cost you a dime to have one of the amazing travel planners at uh, destinations to travel, help you plan your vacation, but it could save your bacon so big because if something goes wrong, they'll take care of it for you. Uh, if you have a, a refund or something major changes, they'll take care of all that for you. Uh, they'll help you with a local knowledge, which would have come in handy for us um, when a, we had uh, like sub 50 degree weather and we didn't really have anything to do because the entire resort was like, stay home, turn on your air conditioners, turn the heat on, you know, only come out for food. Uh, so, yeah. And it just gives you peace of mind. Uh, so, uh, the best way to get in touch with them is to go to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash the letter D, the number two, travel, uh, fill out that short f- survey, and they will get uh, back to you as soon as possible. Again, that's DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash the letter D, the number two, travel, for uh, our friends at Destinations to Travel. And again, doesn't cost you a dime. So... It's the biggest, biggest no brainer in the history of no brainers. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah. All right. So, how are you doing tonight, Uncle T? Pretty good. How about you? Hanging in there? Ah, dude. Yeah, getting back up on the saddle, as they say. Yeah. Work was interesting yeah. and fun today, as always. Oh. <laughs> he could be watching. So, yes, I love it. No, I'm kidding. No, it was good. Uh, it was good. A lot. Yeah. A lot it's happened. Always, uh, it, well, it's always tough to get back to work once you go on vacation. Yes. It's a yeah. It's a struggle to get. We had a we had an interesting week back last in the game. Week. Yeah, I had an interesting week last week. So it's like it, it never ceases to amaze me whenever I go out of town. Funky stuff happens. So great. But we're back back on it, so it's all good. Uh, anything else you want to chat about before we get into it? No, I think we're good. Let's let's do the thing. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the news. And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. Hey, I, uh, I joined the uh, podcast late. Did you guys do that? Did Ed do that? Uh, I think I did. I, I think. Did you? I'm not sure. Proud of you. Good for you. Excellent. I, I didn't even listen to it when I edited it. I just kind of 
I listen. For, I look for big gaps. I'm like, okay, it sounds good. Tony didn't tell me anything, so edit it, throw it out there. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys, we still have a few weeks left till the end weeks? of the year, but we've only got – Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two? It's only the 14th. Two weeks. That's okay. More, okay. But we've only got, as we speak tonight on Monday – 11 days to Christmas. 11, 11, 11, 11. All right. So you can unwrap some holiday cheer Christmas morning with the Walt Disney World and ABC. And I'm quoting here, Disney Parks Magical Christmas Celebration. <sighs> That's a lot of words. <laughs> uh, Walt Disney World Resort and ABC invite you to celebrate the magic of the holidays on Christmas morning. With the Disney Parks Magical Christmas Celebration. Now, let me ask you a question. Mm. I wonder why they didn't involve Disneyland. Hmm. Maybe because it was closed? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, nobody thinks that that's going on live, do they? Probably. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry. Sorry, I said anything. Uh, you can well, watch they weren't the celebra- allowed in the park to record anything either. <laughs> that, that is true. The celebration begins at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, and it's hosted by... Titus Burgess and Julianne Huff. Huff. Mm-hmm. I always mispronounce her name. Uh, this year's Christmas special will feature merry musical performances, holly jolly laughs, heartwarming family stories, and special sneak peeks. Insert commercial for everything coming to Disney. Uh, you may have already met some of Disney's amazing performers when they introduced themselves on Twitter uh, from Walt Disney World, but there's uh, so much more holiday cheer to unwrap throughout the show. You'll catch a look at Remy's Ratatouille Adventure coming to Epcot in 2021. Uh, you'll also get a sneak peek at WandaVision, a Disney Plus original series streaming on January 15th. Uh, and Disney and Pixar's upcoming feature, Soul, which will be available on Disney Plus on Christmas Day. Wow. Uh, you can also expect plenty of belly laughs from actor Keegan Michael Key. Uh, fun social moments with TikTok creator Alex Ojeda, uh, Disney cast member insights, a dive into Disney Dreamers Academy, and more festive surprises during the two-hour special. I like when you're that. Not watching Soul. Disney had a stoop and go down to the bottom of the barrel and go. Oh, let me pull out a TikTok creator because we have no celebrities or or people that could do anything. Kegel Mike and Key. <laughs> Julianne Huff, <laughs> TikTok creator. What? All right, <laughs> whatever. Uh, musical performances include, but not limited and, to. I was going to say that, and but, for the first uh, time in forever. That's right. <laughs> Host Titus Burgess and Julianne Huff sing. It's the most wonderful time of year. Uh, see, the mm. thing that I hate about press releases is, there, is there's no surprises. Mm. So you know exactly what they're going to do. Yeah. Uh, Becky G sings Santa Claus is coming town, coming to town and Feliz Navidad. Uh, Florida A&M University Gospel Choir will sing Joy to the World. Mm. Uh, John Baptiste will sing It's All Right from Soul and Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Uh, Kedron Bryant and the Florida A&M University Gospel Choir will sing Someday at Christmas. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Maddie, Tay, Maddie and Tay will sing It's a Holly Jolly Christmas and Christmas Baby Please Come Home <laughs> uh, Titus Burgess will sing This Christmas as opposed to Last Christmas or That Christmas yeah. uh, Tori Kelly with the Florida A&M University Gospel Choir will sing Let It Snow <laughs> That A&M University Choir is getting a ton of work uh, Trevor Jackson will sing the Christmas song. You won't want to miss any of the holiday cheer, so be sure to don your festive pajamas, which should already be on. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Grab your hot cocoa and spend your Christmas morning with the Disney Parks Magical Christmas Celebration, only available on ABC. Yeah, I was going to insert some rude joke, but I'll just leave it uh, right here. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I'm very interested to see how this is going to uh, take place. I, I assume most of this was recorded either on a soundstage or some of it, I think, was recorded at Disney World uh, at, under the Cloak of Darkness. Uh, but, uh, you know, I have a feeling it's going to be more commercial this year than ever before. 
<laughs> yeah. And we gave them the show that they needed to do, but they chose not to do it. Yeah. And even, you know, when they break for commercial, it will be a Disney commercial that they're breaking yes. to. So the commercial will break Disney. to a commercial <laughs> about the commercial. They, they needed to just bring out some of the, the primo performances from years past. Yeah. Uh, somebody uh, just recently posted uh, one of the Christmas Day parades with uh, Regis and Joan London. Oh, great, great stuff. Great stuff. That's when Aladdin uh, just came out. So they yep. had the, the, the spitting camels on the float. It was great stuff. Great stuff. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the new Taste of Festival of the Arts and some of the details that Disney has now let out of the canvas bag. Sweet. Uh, so it's the Taste of Epcot's International Festival of the Holidays right now, but we're going to flip that to Taste of Epcot International Festival of the Arts uh, coming soon. So a new food studio called Vibrant and Vid- Viv- 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 Vivido. Vivido? Vivido. Vivido? Jeez. Yeah. Uh, will make its debut at the festival. The studio will be located in the space between France and Morocco uh, and will be highlighting creative and, as Disney points out, photo ready dishes. Uh, among the offerings will be a seafood cocktail featuring scallops, octopus, shrimp in a black garlic aioli with a tomato coconut sauce. There'll also be a blue corn poppice filled with cheese and crowned with mm. shredded pork and will also be on the menu. That's yeah. a pupusa, actually. Okay. Have you ever had, you ever, you've never had a pupusa? I don't think I have. It's like a, uh, I don't think it's Cuban or it could be Puerto Rican. I'm not quite sure, but it's like a, uh, it's, it's like a small pancake uh, filled with minced shredded pork. Oh. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. All right. Uh, guests will also have the chance to complete the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine by purchasing five specific and colorful food items. Uh, guests who complete the walk will earn a prize. I am sure it will be a pin. Or a button. Or a button. <laughs> Figment's brush with the Masters Scavenger Hunt, will also be returning to the 2021 festival. I guess we'll be able to purchase the hunt map and stickers at select merchandise locations throughout the park. Ma- I'm sure I'm not, I don't understand why they didn't make this like virtual, like download it. I know. Uh, maps can be redeemed at certain locations for a prize, which probably will be a pen. The Voices of Liberty <laughs> will perform favorites as part of the special presentation entitled The Disney Songbook. Because remember, this is normally when we get our Broadway people, so they're going to be doing that kind of content. Uh, mm-hmm. Performances will take place in the American Gardens Theater throughout the day. Uh, the mm. Taste of Epcot International Festival of the Arts will take place from January 8th to February 22nd, twenty. 21. I'm looking forward to that. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. If I, uh if that is my favorite uh, festival. Yeah. Yeah. Have we heard if they're gonna have like all the artists there or are they gonna be socially are they gonna be in the tent and we have to walk up and talk to them through plastic? I think some are going to be there. Uh obviously art will be there. Uh, but I, I'm not sure how they're going to pull this off. I know Larry Dotson is actually going to the Art of Disney Store for like uh, two weeks. Wow. So, but he's encouraging people to uh, email him what print you want and what you want signed on it, and he will do that, and then you'll just come and pick it up. Right. And pay for it, obviously. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so Disney's announced, uh, some date based multi-day ticket updates. Mm. Uh, so in order to provide more flexibility to guests who are looking to purchase multi-day theme park tickets, Disney's updated their ticketing system. Who knew? Again. Uh, guests who purchased date. See, I got it. Okay. Dis, uh, guests who purchased date based multi-day Walt Disney World theme park theme park tickets are required to select their planned days of admission from a specific range, AKA a validity window. 
You knew, right? Mm-hmm. God bless you. And again. And one more time. <laughs> Aren't you guys glad you watch this live? And if you listen to the podcast, none of that will be there. Um, Disney's ticketing systems will now allow guests to order multi-day theme park tickets, even in circumstances where Disney park pass reservations may no longer be available for select days during a chosen validity window. Why would Disney do that? Why are we constantly making it more complicated than it needs to be? Why are you selling me to a ticket I can't get into a park to? Right. Exactly. Uh, in this we'll take your money. We're just not going to give you a park to go to. That's right. In this situation, you'll be able to make theme park reservations on days within the ticket's validity window based on theme park availability, of course, although you may not be uh, be able to make a reservation or visit a park on a day when reservations are unavailable. Hmm. For example, you want to purchase a three-day Walt Disney World theme park-based ticket. Last day of the validity window is four days after the selected start date. Your so, uh, You select a start date of March 1st. However, in this example, let's assume that there are no Disney Park Pass reservations available for March 3rd, but Disney Park Pass reservations are available for all of the other days during your validity window. In this example, you will be unable to visit the theme parks on March 3rd, but you may use your three-day ticket to obtain a Disney Park Pass on three of the other four days within their validity window. So that would be March 1st, March 2nd, March 4th, or March 5th. Hmm. Disney is expecting that multi-day date-based ticket to remain unavailable for purchase in situations where there are too many days within the theme park's validity window where Disney Park Pass reservations are unavailable. And therefore, you would, as of the time of the order, be unable to make theme park reservations for the full amount of days available on your ticket. It's important to remember that in order to enter a theme park, all guests ages three and older must have a park reservation in addition to a valid admission for the same park on the same date. Dear Jesse, (laughs) when you sell me a ticket, why don't you make sure I have a park pass to go with that? Does that just make sense? Like, uh, if if I'm going to become for these three days or these five days, let's say, and I, I want to go at least three. So when you sell me the ticket, make sure I have a park pass that goes with that. You should do that in the system. I can tell you, I want to go to Magic Kingdom on this day and this, Epcot on this day and Studios on that day, and then right. I get said media, said park pass in my app, and I walk away done. Doesn't that now, just make sense? Yes, but it seems to me that this situation could be just made easy by first come, first serve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I mean, I, am, am I am I totally simplifying it? Yeah, because uh, there's a lot of pieces to this. So you have your day dates, you have your DVC, you have your pass holders. You know, you have all these uh, different groups of, of of people that are trying to get said tickets. But if your pecking order is day date first, DVC, pass holder, yada, 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 I, I just think that you should sell them. And, and if I say to you, uh, Disney guest relations person that I want to go to the Magic Kingdom on March 1st in their example and you say oh I can't sell you a ticket for that day because there are no park passes available then I would say to you well can I go on the 2nd? Now yes you we can get you in so we can sell you a ticket and we can give you a park pass for that day. I just think that the two should be married together. The, right. the two, one I think the, the park passes I think is like part of the fast pass system and listen, if if I'm wrong, please contact us and tell us. Uh, but I think the two should be married. You know, if I'm buying a ticket for a certain day, I should be I should have to pick that uh, park pass day, and it should be married to that ticket, so that nothing else gets out of whack. I don't. Know, it's just me, right? 
to me. Yeah, it's it seems very very convoluted for yeah. convoluted. They're making it harder than it needs to be. Yes, unfortunately, unfortunately. All right, let's talk about uh, New Year's Eve, which is coming up. Uh, Disney has now confirmed uh, early New Year's Eve closing times. Uh, not extended, but early. Uh, while all four Walt Disney World theme parks, as well as Disney Springs, are all dressed up for the holiday season, these locations uh, will be closing, and here are the times of operation. And, as always, are subject to change. Mm-hmm. Uh, Magic Kingdom will be open from uh, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Epcot will be open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. The studios will be open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. The Animal Kingdom will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Wow, that's really late for them. Those animals are going to need some coffee in the morning. Work, Working hard time. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to have to give them some caffeine to get up the next time. Uh, and then Disney Springs will be open from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, Disney Resort Hotels will be offering fun and festive activities for registered guests. Uh, and you probably will have to show your room card, so don't, locals, don't be go running to resorts because that wouldn't be nice. It's not going to happen. Yep. In addition, pre recorded fireworks and other holiday offerings will be available to stream on in-room televisions to help guests ring in the new year. A New Year's Eve party basket designed for the occasion will be available for purchase as well. You can create your own in-room celebration with food, beverages, and other celebratory items for purchase. So that's your whistles, your hats, and all that kind of stuff. Disney's right. floral and gift holiday baskets are available for purchase, including champagne and room decor, along with hats and noisemakers. Just what the person next to you wants to hear at 1 a.m. Uh, select resort merchandise locations will be open late on December 31st until after midnight and will sell champagne in full and individual sized bottles along with board games and other activities to enjoy in your room. Mm. Fireworks previously recorded streaming on your in-room TV and the My Disney Experience app because nothing says New Year's Eve like watching New Year's Eve on your app. Or or playing a fun board game. Look at those fireworks, Mom. That's great. (laughs) Ring in the new year playing Disney's Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, including uh, Minnie's holiday fireworks and the candlelight processional and the New Year's Eve fireworks. So you'll get all three. Uh, scavenger hunts and New Year's Eve crafts uh, vary by resort location. Uh, quick service restaurants, pool bars, and lounges at Disney Resort Hotels will open late uh, and uh, until after midnight on December 31st. Uh, these New Year's Eve offerings obviously are subject to availability and to change. Maybe we should go do stay at a hotel New Year's Eve, John. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> it, sure, I vote we stay at a bungalow, but you know, <laughs> a, a wilderness bungalow. A uh, wilderness bungalow would be fine. I'd be happy with the Polynesian bungalow as well. I don't mm. care as long as it's a bungalow. I would totally be down with that. <laughs> if we only, if we only knew anybody that could get us into a bungalow. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, we could play a board game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and we would be bored playing oh, the game. We, we. Oh no, we wouldn't. We'd be watching fireworks and drinking all night. Who are you kidding? I. Uh, we don't need to play. I have uh, the Disney's uh, villain uh, Monopoly. Uh, that uh, Anna sent from California. Uh, her husband works at uh, USopoly. Nice. It's still unopened and unused. Oh, ah, well, we break it in. Sweet, we can break it in. We can go pick up a a Yoda Monopoly from uh, the Grogu version. Yeah, up oh, Susan says uh, Susan's in. Yeah, all right, Susan, make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Love you, Susan. Uh yeah. 
All right, so uh, we just got done recording some shows for Patreon. Hey, if you'd like to support the show, or if you're just looking for a little bit of extra Disney magic throughout your week, my best suggestion would be to join us over at patreon.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast. You can get up to three uh, shows that you can't hear anywhere else. I promise you, we don't repurpose any of that. You can only hear it over on Patreon. Plus, if you like the Disney uh, by the numbers T-shirt club shirts, uh, you could get uh, one level of membership over there. Will allow you to uh, to get all three shows plus a T-shirt. Uh, are we still doing the uh, the level up? Yes, it's going on till the uh, end of the year. So if you uh, if you sign up, or if you uh, go up one level from where you are right now, like say you go from one dollar to five dollars, or from five to ten, uh, we're going to get you a uh, hand stitched Pixar hat. Uh, we've got uh, some of those; they're awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you go check that out. And uh, Patreon just added a feature where if you pay the entire year in advance, you'll save ten percent, which is really cool. So we appreciate that. Uh, so go check it out: patreon.com forward slash Disney Parks podcast oh and did i mention that at every level of support you get some really killer disney swag oh yeah forgot to mention that Hmm. Mm -hmm. so go check that out help support the show get some fun stuff over at patreon.com forward slash disney parks podcast all right uh next up we're uh, still have a contest running we are giving away some uh swag as we'd like to say uh contest ends december 19th so get all your uh entries in uh sign up you can go to our facebook page facebook.com forward slash disney parks podcast uh to do that uh or if that's not good we are having i don't know we're gonna call this a meetup or a gathering of humans (laughs) we're gonna get together and have some cocktails (laughs) yeah yeah so we're gonna we're gonna gonna get together and drink yeah, so we're going to go to the Four Seasons, uh, which is obviously on Disney property. Uh, on the first floor, we are going to go to the lobby bar. Uh, there's indoor and outdoor seating. We're probably going to try and uh, head outdoors. It'll probably be cool enough uh, where we can go outside. It's going to be 7 p.m. this Saturday, December 19th. Uh, the only, I guess, problem or hiccup or whatever you want to call it is you have to valet park the Four Seasons. Uh, the lobby bar will val- uh, validate your parking, I think, down to $5, but you will uh, have to uh, valet park. And if that's not your jam, uh, I'm sorry, but that's not my rules. That's the Four Seasons. Uh, so I hope we can get some people to come out and just say hello, have a cocktail. Uh, they have yeah. also a great food menu. It is at 7 p.m., so if that's your chow time, uh feel free to bring your chow bag because uh, they have some very good uh, food uh, in the lobby bar as well. Nice. All right. uh, John, you weren't here last week, but last week's trivia question was this. Mm -hmm. What was the last movie that Mr. Walt Disney was able to work on before he passed away? Uh, Is it something that starred Kurt Russell? No. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> it was a bad necessity, the simple, simple necessities. Don't worry about it. Right. It was the Jungle Book, and the winner nice. is uh, Pat D. And uh, it will be in the mail this week, Pat. Uh, I didn't nice. pull it up yet, but I will get to it. All right. This, uh, <laughs> this is a, a trivia question for this week. All right. So the question is, what name did Arlo give his human companion in the movie The Good Dinosaur? I believe it was. There's probably a small percentage of people that even saw this movie. Oh, yeah, I saw it. (laughs) Well, we saw it at a preview, right? (laughs) No, maybe. Yeah, I think we did. Did we? Did? All right. Yeah, I think we did. I think we did. Made so, an impact. Yeah. So <laughs> you were probably sleeping. Uh, what name? <laughs> what Hello, name? Hello, pot. <laughs> <laughs> what name did Arlo give his union compa- uh, human companion in the movie The Good Dinosaur? If you know the name of this so person, email us at Disney Parks Podcast at Gmail. 
com. Word. Excellent. Uh, All right. For those of you who are dreaming about Disneyland Paris, we've got an update on Christmas shopping during the resort closure. So following Disneyland in Anaheim's uh, lead, Disneyland Paris lot. Wait a minute. We can open up the park to sell merchandise? Of course. Uh So even though the resort is closed due to government mandates, uh, Disneyland Paris is still giving theme park fans a chance to come get those last-minute holiday gifts. Thanks, guys. Uh, The World of Disney store at Disney Village has reopened to guests and will welcome them now through December 23rd uh, between 2 and 8 p.m. for all their holiday shopping needs. In addition to the more than 3,000 products from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, and Star Wars. There will also be a selection of toys and costumes for sale with discounts from up to 30% off. Nice. Uh, For more flexibility and comfort, guests can take advantage of the new online click and collect service. Guests can book a selection of items uh, on (coughs) store.disneylandparis.com, then pick up their purchases at the World of Disney Store at the Disney Village. At the indicated time slot, payment will be made upon collection. Uh, guests can access one hour of parking at Disney Village Indigo Parking for free in order to pick up their purchases from World of Disney. Those interested can ask for the free one hour voucher when paying at the cash desk at World of Disney. Nice. Uh, in line with health and safety measures recommended by uh, public authorities, capacity for World of Disney is limited to support physical distancing and face coverings are required for all ages six and older. That's interesting. Uh, the United States, it's what, three and older, three two and, and older. older? Yeah, three. Interesting. Uh, pending government approvals, the Gaumont Disney Village Cinema will reopen at, on December 15th to offer families the magic of a traditional Disney Christmas on the big screen. Uh, golf Disneyland has reopened its golf courses to visitors with reservations only and is in compliance with current health and safety measures. Uh, however, food and shopping facilities will remain closed. This is how how quick of a trip I had at Disneyland Paris. Mm. I did not know there was a golf course. <laughs> like golf course? Hey, they got a golf course there? <laughs> Crazy. If you're not a golfer and you didn't bring your clubs, how would you know? <laughs> well, I mean, I I was with a golfer mm. and he didn't have he didn't have an idea either. But like, we barely we barely knew what was going on in those yeah. days, so yeah. you know. Yeah. All right, uh, Shanghai Disney Resort is ready to celebrate uh, with their wonderful filled winter uh, with new seasonal experiences. Uh, The holidays are right around the corner, and Shanghai Disney Resort is gearing up for Christmas, New Year's Eve, and beyond with their wonder filled winter event. Uh, This event, which started on November 27th, has transformed the entire resort with festive decor at Celebration Square on Mickey Avenue. Four giant Christmas uh, gift boxes wait to be unwrapped each week to reveal a different holiday theme. Along with this weekly surprise, the Enchanted Storybook Castle will be unwrapped on a weekly basis during the new show Unwrap the Wonder a Christmas celebration. Magical. How practical. <laughs> How great. <laughs> uh, ice sculptures featuring Disney characters can also be found across Mickey Avenue and the Gardens of Imagination. Per- perfect for a holiday photo op. So apparently it's co- cold there because those would not last here in Florida, but more than an hour. <laughs> and then we would just call it Olaf Soup. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh, summer. As part, uh, as per the tradition, each evening during the winter season, Mickey, Minnie will welcome guests in the Gardens of Imagination for Mickey's magical tree lighting ceremony. At least, it's not frozen. Uh, where the enormous Shanghai Disneyland Christmas tree will come to life with twinkling lights. Mm. Once the Christmas holiday passes, New Year's Eve will take center stage with fireworks shows, new uh, New Year's dining options, including a six-course meal and wine pairing experience at Aurora, and a five-course meal at the Royal Banquet Hall, and more. 
Once 2021 gets underway, the resort will kick off its Spring Festival and authentic Chinese customs, feasts, and festival, and more to celebrate the holidays. The Asian resorts really know how to do holidays. I hate to say it. Yeah, I I gotta say, man, those those cats that were there really just hitting it and getting it. I appreciate yeah. what they're doing. Uh, in many ways, I'm jealous. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, hey, you know, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for them. I think it's gonna be mm-hmm. gonna be a lot of fun for Disney fans over there. Uh, we still got to make the trek at some yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. We'll just endure the really long plane flight and make it happen. And uh I know that we crack wise. I know that we've caught caught some flack for being sarcastic and maybe a little droll. I admit it. I can I can have a little darker sense of humor. But uh this next story, I kid you not, uh this one actually kind of hurts my feelings a little yeah. bit. You keep moving that headline on me and I swear oh, to God I'm gonna go across the table at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh Radio Disney Oh, yeah. I can only think of like a handful of years of my life that Radio Disney wasn't a thing. Mm. Uh, Radio Disney uh, will cease operating in early 2021 after 25 years on the air. Half of my life, Radio Disney has been a thing. That is insane. Anybody remember uh, when they used to broadcast from the parks? Yes. The studios? Yes. Uh, Disney's announced that Radio Disney will officially cease operations in the first quarter of 2021. This move comes amid ongoing restructuring and an increased focus on the company's streaming service, Disney Plus. Disney Plus should have a, a music channel. According to the New York Times, this decision will result in the termination of 36 full-time and part-time employees. Hmm. The completely digital Radio Disney country stations will also be shutting down as part of this move as well. So let me ask. I didn't know there was a Radio Disney country. I didn't either. I, I didn't either. So the Disney station originally... Excuse me, originally made its debut back in 1996. It has primarily served as a pop music station for preteens and teen- teenagers, often playing music from Disney Channel original shows and mu- movies. The station also helped launch the music careers of many Disney Channel stars like Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato, and the Jonas Brothers. Just stop and think about that for a minute. Yep. Uh, Disney cited that ongoing health crisis and the ever-evolving evolving media landscape as two major reasons for the decision. This move does not affect Radio Disney Latin America, as that is a separate operation. For more information about Disney's ongoing restructuring, go to thewaltdisneycompany.com. So let me I, – I, here's, so here's my question for you. Uh, like, like you're saying, couldn't you have done uh, – something on Disney Plus like had just music with, you know, kind of like a screensaver thing. That's option right. number one. Option number two is couldn't you have uh gone to Sirius Radio and said, Hey, listen, you know, we don't want to do operations, but do you want it uh, you know, we'll, you know, give you rights or give you access to our DJs and whatever in our music library and have a Disney channel on Sirius. You know, uh I, I don't know. I, I just think there were options they didn't pursue. I think it was you know, easy to just uh, cut it and let it go. Yeah. Or maybe or maybe, you know, partnering with Spotify or yeah. any any premium service, but I, I still go back to you know, you've got Disney Plus. You've got people paying for Disney Plus. How hard how much harder would it have been for there to be like a you know, a, an additional service yeah. and have the music channel? I would I would pay depending on what it was. Mm-hmm. You know, the pop music I could do I could do without, you know, I would I would love to hear like you park know music, classic, classic Disney movies. Songs, park music yeah. that, that Disney puts out there. They just yeah. don't they just don't utilize it nearly as much as, as I wish they would. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, even uh, you know, uh Apple's got a, a you know, a streaming service. I'm sure they would have uh you know 
gladly taken on the music service. You know, right? Said, oh yeah, we'll we'll play that. You know, we'll have a whole se- section for it on you know, uh, what is it called? Apple Music Plus or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I just don't. I don't think there was op- I don't think they pursued options uh, or any uh, thing. I think they were just they the intent was to kill it off and not right. try, not try to save it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, if you're a DVC member, uh, perk up your ears, get your notepad out because we have some information here. Uh, members are going to receive a credit for excess dues in 2020. Uh, Disney Vacation Club members will receive a credit for overpaid dues in 2020 with amounts ranging from uh, 25 cents a point for owners at Disney's Vero Beach Resort up to $1.70 per point at Disney's Riviera Resort. Uh, DVC annual dues are intended to cover the operating costs, property taxes, and future maintenance of their properties that they own at. Due mm-hmm. to the COVID-19 of resort closures, each of the resorts ultimately collecting more money in 2020 than was needed to operate. As such, DVC is making the unprecedented move of issuing refunds to owners. Wow. Listen, for them to have money going the other way is very strange. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, The refunds will come in the form of a credit to your 2021 annual dues. So you're not actually getting a check in the mail. Uh, there's a whole chart online. I would tell you to go visit our friends at dvcnews.com. Uh, they have the chart, and you can see your resort and what you're going to get and how it's all going to work. But owners who acquired points in 2020 may not receive the full credit noted uh, in the in the charts. Uh, if points were purchased directly from Disney Vacation Club, the credit will be prorated based on the amount of the time owned in 2020. The actual dues paid for 2020 would have been similarly prorated based upon your purchase date. Uh, statements from DVC at the 2020 Condominium Association meeting recently held in mm-hmm. the Contemporary, um, which I missed this year. Uh, so it would uh, give you a credit regardless of when the transfer of ownership occurred. Uh, it is uncommon for annual dues to be overstated in any given year. However, any modest overage resulting in an accuracy uh, operating estimates is typically rolled into the resort's capital improvement budget. Uh, uh, kudos to Disney, but the thing that everybody was really looking for is, hey, I didn't get to use my resort for three months. But you collected dues. Can I get those back? That's what everybody right. was looking for. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. No, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I can. I, feel, I always feel bad talking about Disney Vacation Club because mm-hmm. I'm not yet an owner. Yeah. Uh, once I once I get those points, man, I'll. Mm. That's right. <laughs> uh, Walt Disney World Resort. Hotel lounges and quick service locations are going to be open until 1 a.m. on New Year's Eve. <laughs> so let's everybody before we go crazy, let's take a deep breath. Really process this. Uh, New Year's Eve revelers won't be able to celebrate in the parks this year. However, guests staying at Walt Disney World Resort hotels will be able to ring in the new year on property. Lounges and quick service locations throughout the resort will remain open until 1 a.m. On January 1st of 2021, here's a complete list of lounges that have extended New Year's Eve hours. Now, before I say this list, I have one quick question. Is this only for hotel guests or do you think locals are able to do this too? I think you should be able to go to these uh, lounges. I think if you rolled up on any of these resorts and said, I wanted to go to the lounge, have a cocktail, I don't think they would turn you away. Well, I think the only challenge I would have is like I know there's one place that I would like to go, and I've already been told by Disney Mm -hmm. that the only way I can get into that resort is if I go to Disney Springs, hop on a bus, and then ride over to the resort. Mm -hmm. I would have only one way to get back to my car if that were the case, Mm. which would be uh, an Uber. Uber. 
a new bear. All right, so here's the list, kids. Well, let's Abracadab- try it, see if we got nothing to lose. Yeah, why not? Abracadabra Bar at Disney's Boardwalk Resort, uh, Ale and Compass Lounge at Disney's Yacht Club Resort, uh, Beaches Pool Bar and Grill at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, mm-hmm. Courtyard Pool at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, uh, Dahlia Lounge at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. So the lounge that I would want to go to is not even open. Mm. Uh, Enchanted Rose at the Grand Floridian. Gurgling Suitcase at Disney's Old Key West Resort. Martha's Vineyard at Disney's Beach Club. Outer Rim at Disney's Contemporary Resort. The Sanaa Lounge at the Animal Kingdom Kadani Village. Mm. Uh, Tambu Lounge at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. Uh, The Turf Club Lounge at Disney Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa. And The Wave at Disney's Contemporary Resort. Mm. Get it now. Have you ever been to the gurgling suitcase? Oh yeah, a bunch of times. Yeah. I think you can seat about four people in it. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Is that where you're going? <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and there's probably no bar stools there anymore because they don't want sitting no. anybody sitting at the bar. So. No, but you can sit outside. It's tons yeah. of outdoor yeah. seating yeah. available. The, yeah, they have all the chairs and, and stuff on the deck. Uh, now, while the lounges will remain open, table service restaurants will not. For example, while the Sanaa Lounge will remain open until 1, the Sanaa Dining Room will close at 9 p.m. And trust me, you want to go to the lounge anyway. Yeah. So at uh, 8.55, uh, you'll want to order that bread service so that you'll have that past <laughs> That's the right. 9 o'clock closing. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just saying. Uh, all right, so a virtual viewing of Minnie's wonderful Christmas time fireworks from the Magic Kingdom. All right, due to the fact there are no fireworks, they're going to put this all online. So, Disney has presented us with a special virtual edition of Minnie's wonderful Christmas time fireworks spectacular. The show is a classic from Christmas's past featuring Minnie as the hostess with the mostest uh, fireworks erupt above a Cinderella's castle set to holiday favorites, such as deck the halls. We wish you a very Merry Christmas. The Minnie's wonderful Christmas time fireworks can be viewed online or or if you are staying at a Walt Disney World Resort Hotel, you can watch them on your television in your room. Just turn to Channel 74 any night during your stay at 6.30, 8.30, or 10.30 p.m. to see the uh, spectacular Epcot International Festival of the Holidays Candlelight Processional. And that is also available for viewing at 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and 9 p.m. So uh, these are online. Uh, Disney Parks blog put them up there. So if you need to see them, you can go see them. I think they did the Neil Patrick Harris uh, Candlelight, probably the most popular one. Uh, it would have been him or Jody Benson. Um, but And also the Christmas time show as well. Uh, and then if you're staying at a resort, I think if you're staying at any of the new resorts like the Riviera, it'll probably just be an option on the bottom of the screen. If you're staying at one of the older resorts, uh, like this is saying, you'll probably have to tune to Channel 74. Mm-hmm. So, fireworks away, my friends. Fireworks away. Sweet. Uh, well, Disney has a new virtual line system for the world of Disney. Uh, ever since Disney Springs reopened in May, uh, there's been several changes to the area. Not only were there distance floor markers and mask requirements, but several stores included a new virtual line system. And now this system has been upgraded at one of Disney's biggest shops. Uh, finally, uh, excuse me, previously, guests could, <laughs> I started to go down another joke there, and I probably would have been smart. Uh, previously, guests would have to walk all the way to World of Disney and sign up with a cast member to get on the virtual queue. Now, you can scan a QR code and join from that link with signs all over Disney Springs. Uh, I thought it was funny how they called it a virtual queue when you had to go, uh, sign up with a cast member. I, I would call that being put on a waiting list. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so once you scan the code, uh, guess first choice, uh, choose the size, excuse me, they're, they first choose the size of the party uh, and are told how many parties are ahead of them. Next, guests will type in their information, including name and phone number. After hitting continue, you'll have a chance to review and confirm your visit to Walt, uh, World of Disney. Then you're notified by text uh, when you are confirmed. 
Everything seems to be the same after that. Guests will receive a text once it's their turn to shop. This may be a slight change, but it makes a huge difference not having to walk all the way to the store just to join the line. Uh, that's awesome. I appreciate how Disney continues to keep updating things to make our guest experience uh, a little bit better. So that's exciting. Yeah, I was the, uh, down at Disney Springs on Friday morning, and uh, it was it it was crowded in the store. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I you know I, I miss the old store. I miss the fact that if I was looking for men's thing, it was all in one area. This was the men's right. section. This was the lady right. section. This right. was the kids section. This was the toy set. I knew where everything is. I cannot find anything in that store to save my life. I feel like the ultimate tourist. Every time I go in there now, I'm asking, hey, can you tell me where I can find like T-shirts? Well, those could be here, here, or here. Why don't you just put them all in one place? Just saying. Yeah. Um, then you have the you have the problem of branding. Yeah. So, you know, you got Star Wars shirts, Marvel shirts, Pixar shirts, Park mm-hmm. shirts. Mm-hmm. And then what about this little cutesy meme shirts? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And a, a lot of the registered checkout areas were really, I mean, they had all the cat. Everyone was open, but it was just, they were all slammed. And, you know, the line looks extremely longer than normal because Mm -hmm. of six feet from between every guest. And they do have cast members keeping everybody in line, you know, with a taser uh, and a cattle prod. But it, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, I had like two things in my hand and I said, you know what? I'm just going to see if I can get them online because... I'm not. I'm not standing here. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. I'm done. I, I'll see I'm you later. out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just. I don't. Know. I. I just miss. I miss the old store. I miss the old store. Yeah. Just me. Just you. Just me. Speaking of you. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. Oh, we're not doing the. We're not doing the. Yeah, we can do that. Uh. <laughs> you don't have to. Uh, go to uh, T Public. We have uh, a bunch of stuff uh, up there for sale, uh, all based on our shirt club. And uh, I put up a sticker, a Disney Park sticker, where we have our tagline. We'll see you in the parks. Uh, I'm working on uh, something else, a uh, bumper sticker. Uh, if it, it, well, for for you. People born in the 90s, you're probably not going to know this, but back in the old days where hitchhiking was a thing, uh, there used to be an old bumper sticker that said something, uh, grass or gas, nobody rides for free, but we're going to Disneyfy it, and we're going to turn it into Mickey bars, Dole Whips, or Cheerios, nobody rides for free. So uh, it'll be like a nice little bumper sticker, uh, hopefully magnetic, that we can get, because I don't, you know, you want to sell your car and take the bumper sticker with you. So hopefully mm-hmm. we can get some magnetic ones made. So uh, if you're interested, just drop us a note, uh, you know, comment or something, and uh, b- b- we'll see. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, go to T Public. It's T E E Public dot com forward slash stores forward slash Disney Parks uh, podcast. And there's a whole bunch of stuff there. And uh, I think there's a link on our website as well. So go check that out. Excellent. Hey kids, how about a little headline news? And now the headline news. All right. First up, and most interesting, <laughs> yeah. is uh, Hawaiian Airlines, which I've heard is a very uh, great airline to fly. Yeah. Uh, they announced nonstop service between Orlando and Honolulu. So if you're looking to get to Alani, uh, it, it, it's only like two days a week, I think, and it starts in March. And I will tell you right now, the fares are pretty cheap. I mean, under a thousand bucks round trip. Wow. Nonstop from Orlando. Mecca Kaliki Maka. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> that is yeah. exactly what I'm thinking. Sweet. Uh, Disneyland has now canceled all dining reservations uh, due to the new uh, restrictions. 
Oh, man. All dining reservations 